Hey there everybody, Bash here again with another 2D Fighter Maker tutorial. In the last episode we covered basic hitboxing, covered how to do damage and all that, and uh, since the last video, since I didn't really need to input these in their own video, um, I added in his Rujotaro's heavy punch and heavy kick attacks. Uh, the aerials only have one version, there's only one aerial light, only one aerial heavy. It doesn't change depending on if you press punch or kick. And I have added in Jotaro's heavy get hits, uh, since we're only going to need light and heavy. I made the decision off camera to make the game have four buttons, light punch, light kick, heavy punch, and heavy kick. Um, so we're, gonna, we're probably going to do something with the other two buttons that we can uh, later on, but right now we're just going to focus on these four buttons. So, um, oh yeah, I added in his blocking animations, as you can see. He now, he now holds up his stand's hands when he blocks, if he isn't hit with a low when There you go. And his stand actually appears. Star Platinum appears. Yay! And I actually added one more palette for Jotaro. So in this video, what we're going to cover, uh, if, you, if you didn't notice, this hits multiple times. And come to think of it, I should have covered this when I made the attack out of the multi-hit attacks. But... Uh, we're going to be doing that today anyway, because the special move I'm going to be doing for Jotaro is Auto Order. In this video, we will be covering how to do special attacks, what attack priorities are, and how to do cancel conditions. Or rather, what cancel conditions are. So, first off, I need to get the sprites input for Jotaro's Auto Order, so I'll be right back once I do that. So, I'm back, and I have the sprites in for both Jotaro himself and Star Platinum for the Auto Order segment. This, in case you were wondering, is the fourth palette I got done uh, <clears throat> in between recordings. It is based off of Dio and the world, but I'm pretty sure those who've seen JoJo know that. But that's not why we're here. Okay, so, first things first, how do we make this work uh, as a multi-hit attack? First thing you have to do, of course, is set up the attack frames and whatever. We're going to have them do four damage each hit. That might seem a little ridiculous right now, but I'll explain why that's a good number right now. Let's make that just a tad bit larger. So we're going to be copy and pasting that on the lot. So we have this. We don't want to click cancel on this one because it's not going to be cancelable. Uh, the shade is a good idea to click. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and set our... We're going to have this set to light for all of these. And then the last hit will do heavy. And then the guard state for all these will be guard hit or block light. Seems simple enough, right? But you, I said before, you might remember in my last video, that I said before this is what makes a combo attack work. This box right here. And it's true, but it's pretty finicky if you just turn it on and leave the hitbox there. So I'm going to teach you a way to make your hits... Like, let's say you want an attack to do definitively three or four hits. This is how you do it. First, you're going to want to have your hitbox there. Make sure it's fine. And then right after, then you're going to have one image for that hitbox. And then after that, make a new frame or a new attack frame and don't put anything here. Make sure it's the same number, same M number. And then copy this hitbox over after that image. And then you click continuous hits. What this does is it makes another hit. Um, it makes another hit for one frame. And if you just keep repeating this process, does it make the skill huge? Yeah, kinda. But it makes the multi hit more precise. And doesn't make it look as bad. So then we're gonna end it off with that. And if we were to and if we were to just make a star platinum character and then as, or assign that to a button and have Joe Throw turn into that, then yeah, he would do a multi-hit. But that's not what we want. Star Platinum, as we can see here, I kinda made him act as though he's a projectile. He uh, moves forward a bit after you call him in, he stops, or once you call him in, he sits for a second and then he moves, does his barrage, and then he stops and fades away. 
So what we need to do is make this appear behind Jotaro when he does this command. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to have to do something called add an object. We're going to have to finick with some with stuff called objects. And this stuff is pretty self-explanatory, or rather easy to get uh, after you play with it for a little bit. Um, but let's go ahead and explain it anyway. Uh, we're going to go ahead and make sure the M number is set to zero here. Uh, set the depth to in. This is a uh, depth here. It shows where the object will appear when we make it appear. And I'll just go into that once it's done. So, so first, with the object here, we're gonna have to um, click on it, go to the go to the part that we want to summon. In this case, it would be Star Platinum Ora Ora. As you can see, it summons there, but he keeps summoning it. Summon it right about there. He keeps on summoning it uh, every time he starts it. So how do we fix that? Well, what we do to fix that is uh, we go to this it's out thing. Or we could make un ifs, or we can check this unconditional box, which just lets us summon an infinite number of star platinums. But in this case, we don't want that. We want a uh, it's out. We go to it's out and click on that. And then since this is a light version, we'll have it do standing light punch every time it's out. So during the time frame that the star platinum is out doing its thing, uh, Jotaro will just do a standing light punch if you do the command. And this will last until Star Platinum's event finishes, and as you can see here, after he fades out, it still won't let him, and that's because uh, this image here, after I made it Alpha 32, which is uh, invisible, it still sits there for about 45 frames, and then here you see he still does the punch a couple times after Star Platinum's gone, or just one time, and that's because uh, we don't want him to keep doing stuff there. So we didn't add a defense frame to Star Platinum here. Uh, that's because, you, if you've seen the show, this doesn't make sense. But since Star Platinum is not the character, hitting Star Platinum shouldn't damage Jotaro. In the show, yes, it would, because that's how stands work. But for the sake of simplicity, we're going to make Star Platinum an invincible object. But he won't be too far away from Jotaro at all times anyway. It's not like he's another character that can be operated from the other side of the screen. So, that's how you make that work. But if we were to test the game right now, it wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to do this command. So how do we make it work? Well, we go back to the commands page, and you'll see that I've added three more commands. One for light kick, heavy punch, and heavy kick. Time to explain how this works. So, you, my mistake here, when I was using this engine for the longest time, was, um... I would add the command at the bottom of the list, and then I would do input it like down, down, forward, forward, A, set it to 25, and set it to the skill, and it still wouldn't work. The reason for that is because I wasn't taking into I wasn't taking into account the command priority. So what that is is these are the button presses. These button presses are what's going to make sure you can do these things. You want attacks that also use these button presses, but also have other commands to be above those button presses. So these four button presses should always be at the bottom of the list. So let's go ahead and make a new command. Ora, ora, light. So what we're going to do here, we're just going to do the straightforward down, down, forward, forward, A. Simple enough. Command time uh, for, for most motions, you're going to want to do 25. Uh, because that's how much time it takes to do a command, or a quarter circle command. Uh, the air, we don't have an air one set up yet. The stand version will be standing light punch, stand far will also be, er, no, not standing light punch. It's going to be ora ora L. Whoops. Crouch version, unless you want it to do something different when it crouches, and even then, that's really finicky. Uh, you're going to want to also set it to the command itself. So now, if we were to test the game, you see that we're in, we can do all the stuff, and now I can summon Star Plat. Do -do 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 -do. Damn. We do a lot of hits. One, two, three, four, five. I don't even know how many that does, but look at all that damage up there. It does a good 30 damage. 
And after Star Platinum is out, we can move around. But only after a minute of us uh, sitting there. And if I do the command a bunch of times, it will only do standing light punch. But Oro Oro L does in fact work. Uh, there aren't any problems with this. I'm doing it every time in rapid succession. Um, just gotta make sure that Star Platinum isn't out there. So if we summon two, stu tar yeah, two Star Platinums, they won't be able to clash with each other because they're two, or they're not, they don't have defense frames. But if I were to put defense frames on both Star Platinums, then if uh, this Star Platinum was heading for the other one, it would definitely deal some damage. So we got a special move in. We have a we have a special move in. We have our normals. We have all that good stuff. We have the movement. We have blocking. We're set up for a super move, right? Well, if you want that, then you might just want to skip what I'm about to do next. But what I'm about to do next is set up combos. If you want a game that isn't centered around combos, then just skip the rest of this video because that's what it's going to be focusing on. Uh, and what I'm going to be focusing on now is a little something called... That's odd. Why can't I... That's weird. I can't summon Star Platinum. Hmm. Odd. I can summon it just fine with this one, but not this one. Oh no, because I was hitting the wrong way. What? I set it to the kick. It's supposed to be a punch. Whoopsie me. Um, whatever. But what we're going to cover now is something called cancel conditions. And what cancel conditions are, are pretty much what allow combos to happen. And this is going to get maybe a little bit complicated. Just bear with me. I'll make it make more sense soon. So, we're going to focus here on um, the normals we have, the lights and all that. Uh, we're going to start out with standing light punch. If we click on the thing, it says SK level. If we click on the name, it says initial set SK level. Uh, this stands for initial settings of the the attack overall. Um, and the skill level is 10. I'm going to move this up to 12. Uh, no, we're going to move it up to 14. Move this to... We're going to get over that later, but we're going to set both the lights to 14 for now. Um, so what do these do? Well, if you right click, uh, you go down a little bit, you'll see Add Cancel Condition. Now what you need to do on every attack before we do anything here, um, we're going to need to just put a Cancel Condition in here so that our Cancel Conditions for other attacks don't transfer over to, say, our different attacks because um, they can do that. I've had cases where that does happen. It's not fun. So, what we're going to do now is cover what exactly cancel conditions are. A cancel condition is something that lets uh, a certain attack, when it hits, cancel into another attack. Which just, as soon as it hits, you can skip the rest of the frames here for this attack. You can skip them all by doing another input, and it will go to, say, this animation right here. And then once that hits, you can skip the rest of these animations and go to uh, this animation. We're, that's probably not how the combos will be structured, but let's go ahead and show you how to do this stuff. Wait, I'm gonna sneeze. Ah, never mind, this calls me on. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. So, what you're gonna wanna do is right click right before your hitbox. I'm not gonna put it right here because, well, I probably should, just in case we do... No, yeah, that'll be dumb. Okay, we're gonna put this right here, since this is where it's gonna hit most of the time. Right-click on this FA, add cancel condition, so it's right before it, and then click hit. The cancel condition uh, says zero empty, zero ween, that actually is supposed to say between. Uh, it's between these two numbers, which you're able to cancel to. We're just gonna go ahead and set this number up here to 30. And since this is a little, little quick note, this SK level right here, you do not want your your first cancel condition of an attack to match this number of the attack. 
because if you do, uh, if you just mash that button, uh, you will do a shit ton of hits with that one attack. It won't just skip to that attack over and over. It'll go... It'll just make the hitbox hit a bunch if you mash the button, which we don't want. Uh, unless you want that to be a feature, in which case, what the hell? So what we're going to do is we're going to have it set to 14 with this initial set being skill level 13. And then uh, I believe I actually just set, yeah, this is set to 14. So now if we were to go into the game, if we were to go into the game, or wait, you can see that as soon as I hit with the standing light punch, If I hit with, uh, or if I hit, crouch, the, if I do the crouching light input, I skip the rest of the animation. So I do two hits at once, or not at once, but I do two hits really fast. The timing is a little strict, but uh, that's pretty much how canceling works. So if you really wanted to. We could make a combo that goes standing light punch into crouching light punch into standing light kick, crouching light kick, standing heavy punch, standing heavy kick, standing heavy kick, or crouching heavy kick, crouching heavy punch. That kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to mess around with canceling values or cancel conditions off camera here, and then I'll get back to you when I have more stuff done. I'm back, and uh, boy howdy did I certainly do some cancel condition stuff. Look at this garbage. It's so dumb. And we do have a little bug here. Uh, if we hit with the standing light punch that is caused from the Oda Oda when the star button's out, it'll just keep going if we keep doing the command. That's, that's a bug, and we can fix that, but <laughs> we certainly did get some uh, stuff done to this video, that's for sure. Bap, there we go. We, had, we even got this stuff. We even got, we even got some juggles in here. If I can do it right. It took me a minute to perfect this. As you can see, I have not perfected it, because I'm an idiot. God damn it. Uh, I'll do it once. Maybe not. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, I did it to the best of my ability. We even got infinites. No fighting game is complete without infinites. Do 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 is an infinite. That's about all there is to that. So yeah, that has been the uh, tutorial on special moves and cancel conditions. Um, there's one thing. Oh yeah, and multi hits that we went over. Uh, so that's about gonna do it for this tutorial. There's nothing else for me to go into detail with. Uh, oh yeah, attack priority was the other thing we did. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If there's anything you missed or anything I need to explain further, just leave a comment below and I'll help you out personally if I can. Uh, or refer you to another comment of a person who had a similar problem. But more than likely, uh, your problem is not going to be related to somebody else's. Or maybe it is. I don't know. I can't see the future. So yeah, that's going to do it for the tutorial. Thank you guys so much for watching. If there's anything in particular you'd like to see me cover in the future, let me know. And that's going to do it. I will see you guys in the next video, and stay serious. Okay, so I know I already kind of ended the video, and uh, I'm sorry for that. But, uh, after talking with someone that I just added to my group, that just joined the group that I joined or made in Discord for people who need help with 2D Fighter Maker stuff. Um, I decided to actually make this a thing because it's not very, it's kind of not self explanatory. So I'm gonna walk you through it because double tap inputs are kind of hard. We're gonna go through making dashes. 
and that's it's a pretty simple process once you know what to do. But uh, I'll just show you how it works in game because you can't just put forward, forward, and then be done with it. Unfortunately, you have to do something a little bit specific. So here we have Jojo's forward and backward dashes. Um, we're gonna go ahead and at the bottom here add the command forward dash. Uh, we're gonna leave this as it is, uh, and we're gonna go ahead and set the stand and stand far to forward dash. And this is where the little trickiness comes in. You actually need to do forward and then this little dot here, which checks to see if that key was released. Because uh, if that key was released, like if nothing's being pressed, it won't do anything, which that's what it wants. And then forward again. So now if we were to test that in game, it would press forward and then see if you let go of the key, and then press forward again. So we do the exact same thing for backward dash. Except we do the backward push for the backward arrow. And all of these commands assume that you're facing the right side of the screen, your character is. And which is why if you have, um, if you have character sprites that are facing this way, you're going to want to flip them horizontally so they face that way, or else your character is going to be turned backwards. I learned that the hard way during one of my other projects. So now, if we were to test, oh, I kind of have to touch the demos, haha, <laughs> that was about to refer to my is actually, this is like, this is me from like three versions later, or, no, like one episode into the future, trips into the future, I'm about to go into the making video on it. So, now, if we were to test again, uh, let me just do something real quick so that I don't screw myself. Oh, uh, well, I can't, it's gonna make, make sure I'm not careful either. You see that if I double tap these buttons, uh, I now actually dash. And it does mark these as an active, but you can hit during these. And I would do the special move that like follows the enemy, but you know, it has something on it right now that I can't show in this tutorial. But yeah, this the backward dash that I have for Jojo actually puts him into the air. So if you were to hit him out of it, it would do that, because it's in the air of space. Uh, so you back dash, light kick, and you're dead. Right. Oh, no. Ah, fucking ow, oh, my ears. That scared me. Yes. Uh, he has sound effects on some of the times, which I'm going to be getting into rather shortly. Uh, not to press crash and light punch, but whatever. So that is actually the end of this video. Um, we got dashes in, yay, we have dashes and all that goodness. Video. After this one, I'll be going over something called variables, and then in the video after that, I'll be going over main menus, character selects, and the UI. That's going to take a while. So thank you guys so much for watching. Or watching. Let me know if there's anything specific you'd like to see in the future, and I will see you next time. Stay serious.